And Jonathan, baby, if you can hear Granny. Along the train tracks. I'm asking for a girl's help. Through the thick brush near Garden Oaks. Granny loves you, little fella. Hang in there. A search for a missing boy. We need to find this little boy, please. Grows more desperate by the hour. We're looking. We're trying our best, baby. 12-year-old Jonathan Foster. My daughter was at work, and he called it her job. He said it was an emergency. Who vanished from his and northwest he, Houston neighborhood on he, Christmas Eve. And then when she got to the phone, no one was there. The mysterious call came in just before 2 in the afternoon, a few minutes after the boy's stepdad reportedly saw Foster at his home. We all want him home, safe. Jean Casares of In Session in for Nancy Grace tonight. After this show started tonight, and we are with you live tonight, Texas authorities issued an Amber Alert for this 12-year-old little boy missing since Christmas Eve. But don't think that that is just for Texas. It was issued within the state of Texas. But you know what's in Houston, Texas? It's Interstate 10. Interstate 10, which stretches from all the way to the West Coast, all the way to the East Coast. Houston, Texas is right in the middle of the country on Interstate 10. This little boy now believing he has been abducted could be anywhere to Lakeisha in Indiana. Good evening, Lakeisha. Hi, Na I mean, not Nancy. Hi, Jean. How are you Nancy's doing? watching, so she's yeah, she's hearing your How call, you too. Doing, Nancy? I hope you had a good Christmas. I'm fine. Time. Thank you for joining us. What's your question? Yeah, I got two questions. Um, Y'all pointing a finger at the stepfather. I wanted to know if the mother had full sole custody of the son and if the daddy had legal, the legal father had visitation rights. And also, um, since he had to walk from the babysitters to the his house, I was wondering if any of the neighbors seen a car driving along the side of the road that was slowed down, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Things mm -hmm. like that. So. You know, the, the facts are coming out very slowly right now. We don't know the familial relations as well as authorities do, obviously, at this point. But Deshaun McCollum, who is also the author of Cold Case Pathways to Justice, right now, at this minute, as they issue this Amber Alert, they are talking, am I right, to everyone they can find in that area where he walked. Oh, there's no question. They're canvassing the entire place. They're talking to people on parole, on probation. They're talking to known sex offenders on the sex registry. They're talking to other members of the family that are outside to try to get the best picture of what was going on in that home. They're talking to strangers in the neighborhood. Did you see anything? They, when they respond to that scene, they'll turn the video on in the squad car. They're going back and looking at that video. Is there any car out of place? Is there any person watching? What may have, you know, we missed? They're doing it from ground zero up. They're not going to leave any stone unturned here. And to Joe, Joe Gomez, reporter, KTRH News Radio in Houston, Texas, what can you tell us about this area? It's northwest Houston. We understand it's the Garden Oak home area. Uh, it seems to be really nice, but it also seems to be right on the bridge in the front of, of forested areas. Right, that's not uncommon, you know. I mean, Houston is a pretty, uh, pretty lush area, and in this uh, particular neighborhood, Garden Oaks, typically a, a rather quiet uh, neighborhood, you'd think. And there, it is very densely wooded uh, nearby, so, you know, if somebody were, you know, God forbid, say, trying to hide something or hide a body, it, I mean, it, there, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of woods, there's a lot of brush, but again, police have been searching on horseback everywhere, scouring ATVs. I mean, they have, they have literally been scouring this area with a fine-tooth comb, and they found no trace of little 12-year-old Jonathan Foster Yetchi. And they are con continuing that search tonight to find this little boy after calling that Amber Alert to Pat Brown, criminal profiler. When you have 1,400 sex offenders in the Houston, <laughs> Texas area, where do you start and how do you, how do you canvass them? Well, you, first of all, you start right there at the apartment house because most sex offenders are pretty lazy, so they're just going to look in the neighborhood. If maybe the one down the hall, in other words, that actually knows the boy can just grab him and pull him into his apartment. So they're going to look right there. But the other thing that really I'm, I'm confused about is the, the phone call that was made that the mother said she received at work. Uh, did nobody recognize the voice on the telephone, the person who picked it up? She said when she got there, there was nobody there, but there was, had to be a voice, either a child's voice or an adult voice, male or female. And also, they sh theoretically should be able to trace that phone call back to find out where it came from. Exactly. To Joe Gomez, reporter, KTRH News Radio.
exactly what do we know this phone call what did the voice say male or female and it was to his mother while she was still at work right Right, right now, police are releasing details as to the, the sex of the voice, but we do know the voice was saying that, that somebody on the other side said they had an emergency. It was important. They had to speak with Jonathan's mother right now, but when she got to the phone, there was nobody on the other end. Why? Why would they hang up? Well, was there something going on? Was, it, there, was there some kind of traumatic incident happening? Did they suddenly have a, a, a pang of guilt? Did they realize perhaps they were going to be busted? These are a lot of questions we don't have the answers to. No, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Rupa Mikla and Amy Nancy Grace, producer, what do we know as far as the search that is urgent, it is desperate, and it is continuing? Uh, that's right. And it's not only police, Gene, but it's also uh, private entities, search and rescue teams, tech was, tech, Texas EquiSearch is involved. They have been doing ground foot searches. Uh, they've been using all-terrain vehicles all day today, and they were actually extending their search into the dusk hours, even searching at nighttime tonight, Gene. All right, everybody, we're trying to find a little boy, a 12-year-old little boy, and think of the cases that we've covered where they are alive, they are found uh, in Missouri, Elizabeth Smart in Utah. It can happen. 12 years old, he was last seen on Christmas Eve. You know what we found out? We found out that he was so excited to open his presents that he could hardly contain himself because Christmas was so close. He's on Christmas vacation and did very well in school. A little boy last seen right before those hours of Christmas to Michelle in Florida. Good evening, Michelle. Good evening. Thank you for taking my call. You're so welcome. Thank you for calling. I have a quick question. Um, if the stepfather was in fact home, why wouldn't he have escorted the child with a coat back to the babysitter? And also, do we know what the relationship uh, between the stepfather and the child was? Such a good question. Dr. Doug Bremner, professor of psychiatry, joining us from Atlanta tonight. You know, I don't care how close it is. You've got a little boy, he's 12 years old. Why didn't his father escort him back to the babysitters? Yeah, that's that's a big question in my mind as well. Um, why is it, what was this mysterious phone call? Was it a male or a female? And you wonder if there was some uh, domestic violence involved. Okay. <clears throat> the phone call that came into the mother's work apparently seems to have been answered by someone at the switchboard so they could interview the individual that uh, received the phone call and transferred the phone call um the grandmother in the segment stated he called so clearly someone told the grandmother that it was a male that called work because she said he called and said it was an emergency. Just my thoughts.